Warning. Listening to this show may result in increased levels of inspiration, motivation, and innovation. Side effects can include the immediate urge to take massive action to build a better business and life for yourself and others. You've been warned. Welcome to Influencers Radio with your host, Jack Mize. And welcome back to another episode of Influencers Radio. You know, there's there's no debate right now that the COVID-19 pandemic has had a huge impact on our lives. Besides the impact that it can have on the physical uh, health of those who catch the virus, you know, it's becoming more and more clear that it's had a major effect on our mental health, whether we actually catch COVID or not. But the fact is that long before COVID-19 reared its ugly head and long after it's gone, cognitive health issues will be something that most of us will face, whether it's ourselves or family members. Um, we're going to face issues with mild cognitive decline, such as brain fog, memory loss, to you know some of the very devastating effects of Alzheimer's and dementia. It's just part of aging. Uh, but there are things that we can do to delay and possibly even prevent these effects of aging by increasing our brain strength. And that's what we're going to be talking about today, because my guest is Bernice Hunt. She is a board-certified wellness coach specializing in brain health, providing the care and support needed for those who are facing cognitive decline and long-term memory loss, helping them to stay sharp and live their best lives. Bernice, welcome to Influencers Radio. Thank you. Thank you for having me, Jack. Well, you know, this is a, a really fascinating topic. And, uh, you know, I, I, I can't help but start off by, by talking about um, the effects on the mental health of the uh, COVID-19, just the, the whole pandemic. Um I can imagine, uh, you know, just the worries and anxieties people have about getting COVID-19 can be overwhelming, but uh, just some of the the things like social distancing, you know, obviously meant to help reduce the spread of COVID-19, but, you know, we're starting to see that, that you know, we're, we're social people. We're used to being around people, socializing, and I imagine that can cause uh, a lot of stress and anxiety. So we can, can we uh, kick this off and if we talk about just the the effects the pandemic has had on overall mental health, whether or not you, you, you catch COVID or not. Right. And people really may not realize the amount of damage that stress does to your body and particularly, especially to your brain. Stress is disastrous. And as we know, stress will um, be the foundational problem in like over 60% of diseases. And the fact that having this pandemic in our society creates stress is going to have an effect on your brain. Like you say, whether or not you actually do get COVID, whether or not you're asymptomatic or symptomatic, the fact that your mind is under stress and that you're not doing anything or or don't know what to do to relieve that stress is damaging your brain or can bring damage to your brain that you may see down the road as, like you say, other forms of cognitive decline. Our our brain, our bodies are aging. We can't stop the aging process, but what we're trying to do is to get a handle on the damage that can be caused, and stress is a major um, cause of of, of brain damage. So... um, you know, obviously, you know, stress and the anxiety caused by by the COVID. But you know, there's been stress and anxiety, uh, like I said, long before COVID nineteen. And a lot of people cope with it different ways. They externalize it in different ways. But what are some of the the symptoms of of the stress, uh, particularly on our, our cognitive abilities? What are some of the signs that, that that stress and anxiety is taking its toll on us? Yeah, we have emotional, you can have emotional uh, flare-ups that are atypical of your, your personality, your behavior. Also, stress, is, it's, it also shows itself in our sleep patterns, our sleep routine. 
many Americans are, or two thirds of Americans are not getting the adequate sleep, the, the sleep hours that they need. And a lot of that may be because of stress in their lives. Also with stress can come different um, cravings, food cravings that you have. You know, we talk about our comfort foods and all of those kind of things. You may notice yourself going to and eating more of the wrong kinds of foods, and that can be a, a cycle in itself, but that may be stress-related also. Also, not being a workaholic, not taking time. We, 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 we spend a lot of time during our day trying to make things happen and not enough time stepping back from it and, and relaxing. Even they say like when you're working, you know, you should be taking a break, you know, every hour or so standing or just moving around every hour because you're building up stress and anxiety in your body. So things like that, that we need to become more aware of just, just during our daily activities. So are you saying my recent love of Oreos may not <laughs> It may, it may be part of some of this uh, um, right, uh, right. stress of the so well you know that that's right. good to know and and you know I think it'll, it's been long known at least by people who practice things like you know meditation yoga even more physical things mm-hmm. on the the mental um, uh, benefits that they experience rather than just uh, a physical can can you go into that a little bit about about those uh, the, the mental benefits of some of the things that you talked about as far as the the, the activity and you're talking about taking breaks and things like that because right. I, I think people right. really underestimate the uh, uh, you know the power those types of things can have right right there's a lot of research now on things like meditation and and taking time mindfulness even even in terms of chewing your food you know <laughs> taking 30 you know 30 chewing it 30 times before you swallow those kind of things like that but but you do you need to step back and it has to do also with our um circadian rhythm that we have you know being thrown off because we can work nowadays we can you know we can work around the clock you know we can work practically 24/7 people stay up into the wee hours of the night because they feel they have to get something done and a lot of times it's without taking the breaks in between. Even something like there's something that's called um, meditation walking. You don't have to sit down and, you know, cross your legs and start your mantra and that kind of thing and, you know, get into a, uh, a, a quiet atmosphere all by yourself and all of that kind of thing to get med- to start meditating. You can, you can meditate while you're walking. You can meditate in other, other places it's just to get your focus off of the work that you're doing and the things and concentrate on the now and be present in the sensations that the things that you're feeling in the now, just taking deep breathing exercises, you know, and that can be done everywhere. That can be done, you know, when you're driving in your car, deep breathing exercises, something to release the tension and the anxiety. Sometimes people don't even know that they may have clenched um, jaws or clenched hands and are clenched, tightened shoulders. You don't even know that, that you're doing that because it's become such a habit. It's such a constant part of you. So we just need to take a step back and really become intentional with those kind of things. Yeah. You know, and, and that's uh, one of the, the things I really uh, enjoy, you know, listening to you is because you, you make things so clear um, or, or really kind of open up the, 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 the possibilities and definitions of things. Cause I think a lot of people, when they think of meditation, they do think of that, that it's, you know, sitting there with your eyes closed and the om, you know, um, th- mm-hmm. th- that's what it takes to, 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 to meditate. But, um, I guess really when you think about it, you're saying clear your mind, right? That that's, right. I guess, uh, the, the simplest form of, of meditation. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I mentioned at the top of the show, a uh, brain fog, and that seems to be such mm-hmm. a, such a, uh, a, a prevalent topic these days, you know, when people talk brain fog, mental fog. Um, mm-hmm. can, can you kind of define what that is, maybe some of the causes? Right. And and because uh, a lot of people, I think, you know, they, they may not realize that that's even what they're experiencing. Right. Well, your brain, your brain needs oxygen. Your brain needs nutrients. Your brain needs uh, hydration. And that um, comes from your bloodstream, from the blood flow. And if you're doing anything to hinder that, 
then you're going to have a problem. You're also, um, there's so much energy. I think of it like um, uh, fireworks going off in your brain all the time. Your brain is working and it just has a job to do and it uses a lot of fuel, a lot of energy. And with that comes, you know, the the side effects of the oxidative stress. And so there's a lot of things going on and you really need to um, get a handle on that in terms of your stress, but you also need to get a handle on that in terms of your blood flow. If you're not giving your brain what it needs, it's not going to be able to perform. And so if you don't have your blood flow flowing, so we're talking about exercising, we're talking about um, those kind of things. If you're not getting your hydration, the water, you know, your brain, <laughs> your brain 75% water. So you're going to have to get that, that going up water in there for the cell set to, to be able to operate. If you're not talking, if you're not being able to get, give it what it needs, the oxygen that it needs to, um, to work. You're going to have those, you know, those short outs, that brain fog, you know, the memory loss, all those things. Also, if you're killing off your nerve cells, you're going to have, you know, the memory loss and the word finding problems as you're, as you're, you can't make those synapses. You can't make those connections, those pathways in your brain. And so all that comes together. Brain health is really multifaceted. It's not just one or two things you do. It's no magic pill you can take. It's no, nothing you can drink, that kind of thing. It's a, it's a whole set of things that are working in conjunction with each other. And if you're falling short in, the, in one or two of those areas, you're not going to have optimal brain health. And that's what I try to train people how to do. Well, you know, and, and that's really refreshing because I think – uh, there's a whole industry that would disagree with you that there's not a magic pill <laughs> or something that you can take um, right. uh, for this. And uh, to me, it's refreshing to to, to get get a you know an honest view of of this. And I think there's a lot of people that may not realize because you know this pandemic has created um, what uh, workaholics and people that may not have been workaholics right. but before. And I think, uh, you know, a lot of people think, oh, the pandemic, people don't have to go to work. They're, they're sitting at home loafing on the couch, but there's a whole group of people that now that, that, that can't separate work from home because they're working from home and, and they often find themselves, uh, you know, going from bed to the computer and then, find themselves mm-hmm. going from the computer back to bed because they, they, they've they've mm-hmm. uh, been at, at it all day. You know, what uh, kind of impact uh, can that have? And, and are there symptoms that people can look for that they can say, oh, wait, what am I doing to myself? Yes, definitely. And that, that has created a problem, especially like you say, and people that were leaning toward being a workaholic, now they've got jumped all the way over off the cliff, you know, because it's very easy to do, you know, especially in, in these times. But yes, you um, need to really take time for yourself. You know, you need to take time for yourself. A lot of people sacrifice sleep. And that's probably the, one of the worst things you can do because your sleep time is a time, I think of it like maid service. <laughs> you know, that's the time they go in and they, everything gets cleaned up. You have a, a whole system with your brain, a whole um, immune system that's inside your brain that works. You have a whole, and they set aside that time and set aside purposely to do a lot of cleaning and reorganizing and ordering and those kind of things. And if you're sacrificing that time, it's going to show up. They say even if, even you can tell the difference the next day if you have not got your adequate hours of sleep. Most for most people, that's seven to eight hours of sleep. The next day, you will have deficits in how you operate, how you think, how you function, you know, how you can be productive. Your productivity level diminishes. You know, your, your response time diminishes. Your clarity diminishes. And, it's, and, and you may not connect that to the fact that you're not getting adequate sleep. You're not getting the rest. You're not giving your brain enough time to clean out all the trash and the waste, you know, from all the activity that's, that it's doing and reorganize things in terms of your memory. Your memory improves when you get a good night's sleep. Your memory the next day is better. Test results are better. And that's, that's all been researched. Uh, some of this isn't even about, you know, taking time. You're saying that it's something that can be uh, uh, an appreciable difference the next day when you get that, right. that rest. 
Mm-hmm. Well, that is, you know, really remarkable. And I think there's a lot of people at this point listening to this that thinking, oh, wait, okay, uh, I, I recognize this in myself. And and you mentioned a few things there that I think are really important, that um, loss for words. I think a lot of us, you know, as we get older, the, the those, um, mm-hmm. you know, there's, there's words or, or descriptive phrases that we just escape us as we uh, mm-hmm. are, are trying to speak. And we think to ourselves, I, I, I catch myself all the time saying, uh, you know, where, where is my mind? You know, um, <laughs> you know, it, it's taking a break from me because I'm trying to think of something that, that I should know. Is that something that's, that's common, that's common um, with, with a- aging and, yeah. and is it something that, you know, exercising your brain can, uh, help uh, either uh, slow down or even reverse? Yes, and I like the way you use the word common because, yes, it is common. But what I want to emphasize is that it's not normal. Oh. It's common in that it happens to a lot of people, but it's not the normal way that things should be going. And there's a difference. It's It's common because a lot of us have habits, have created habits that are not brain-healthy habits. And the result of those habits is now making um, your brain at this time in your life manifest some of those things. Because we've, and they just found out, I think it was in the 50s when they finally um, figured out, or maybe the 60s, they finally figured out that our brain, we can grow new brain cells. Before that, they were always under the impression that, you know, what you got, you got what you got, you know, and the number of brain cells you got when you were born, that's what you're going to have. And um, they're all going to start diminishing with age. And so by the time you get, you know, a certain age, you're not, <laughs> not going to be able to think <laughs> straight, you know. <laughs> but they decided, they discovered that that is not true. Your brain still can, does produce brain, new brain cells, the the difference is the rate at which they produce the cells and the, how, how speedily they produce new brain cells is dependent a lot upon your lifestyle. And so that's where you have, if you are losing more brain cells than you're gaining, then yeah, you're going to start experiencing the word finding, the, the, the um, memory problems, you know, the, all those kind of things. You lost, can't find your keys, don't know where you parked your car when you come out of the store and <laughs> all of those kind of things. Have you been following you know, because, me? Uh, that's what I have. I, <laughs> I know. No, I've been, I'm just relaying what I, how I used to be. No, <laughs> okay. <laughs> reminiscing. <laughs> but anyway, um, yeah, you're going to experience those things because you haven't, you're, because there's two parts, there's a lot of parts of that. I can talk on this forever. But anyway, one part is actually birthing the new brain cells. But of those that are birthed, 50% of them will die if they're not nourished. Just like an infant, just like a baby, just like a whole lot of things. Just like when you're growing plants. You know, the seed will come up. You don't water it, it's going to die. The brain cell will be birthed. If you don't nourish it, not nourish, nourish it and, and um, take care of it, you know, nurturing it, nurturing it with, stimulation and enrichment, enhancement, things that you do, which is part of your lifestyle, it's going to die. The other thing is you create new pathways. When if For the 50% that happened, and you can actually, 90% of them can survive if you're doing the right things, but let's just say 50%. For the 50% that do actually survive, they will start creating new pathways. And so when your old cells and pathways die off, which they will, which is a part of aging, your brain won't be damaged because you have new pathways that you have created with your new brain cells. Unfortunately, in the world we live in, we're not spending as much time in our lifestyle as we used to, and so we're not nurturing the new brain cells or we're not giving them or nourishing them with the proper food so that they do survive, and so a lot more are dying off than our surviving and then we don't have the new pathways and so then we experience word finding memory recall problems you know all of those things so that's what we're trying to turn around i think uh, one of the great things about what you're doing and and, and you mentioned uh that it uh, you have to you have to attack this purposefully right and and mm-hmm. uh, like we said before there's not a pill right to to take for this that that it actually 
takes a combination um, of things. And I know that that's what you do uh, so well, because uh, I know with, with, with the strategies and the philosophies that you you use that that people do you know experience the improved focus mm-hmm. and increased energy and and uh, better sleep and 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 even weight loss more as a uh, as an yeah. after effect of of, of uh, taking care of your your brain and I think um, uh, you know I, I kind of think of you as. Uh, like a um, somebody would go to a personal trainer for their physical body, you, you know, like a, a, for a personal trainer for the mental. So let's let's talk about that. Mm-hmm. Some of the tactical things um, right. that uh, the people can do, you know. So what are the, what are some of the things that that people can do if they you know accept that okay, there's not a pill. I'm not going to get this done without uh, effort and uh, you know some some really putting in some focus and, and trying to achieve this. Um, what are some of the things that, that people can do? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's a great question. Well, I have um, developed a program and it's based on what I call the five keys of brain health. And I call it the things that your brain needs. And so I took the word needs and I turned it into an acronym for the five keys that your brain that 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 you need to work on, and that is your nutrition, of course, nutrition, exercise, enhancement, and by that I mean all of the stimulating things that you do for your brain, enrichment you give your brain through like through your lifestyle activities, your de-stressing, which includes detox, but de-stressing and sleep. So nutrition, exercise, edu- uh, enhancement de-stress, and sleep are the keys to brain health. And those are the things that we work on. Because like I said, it's not a magic bullet. It's not a one fixed type of thing. It is a combination of things that you weave into your lifestyle. And really it's about tweaking your lifestyle because what I find is that some people, you know, are better at, at some things than others. Some people, you know, ex- they exercise, their exercise is fine, but, you know, their sleep may not be good and, you know, or their nutrition comes and goes, that kind of thing, or they don't know how to de-stress or whatever. And so you, we tweak it, just tweak your lifestyle. Unless you're a person that regularly eats, you know, Twinkies and hot dogs, you know, and stays up to 4 o'clock in the morning, you're not going to have to make any really drastic changes, but you are going to have to tweak some things. Uh, you know, I can't help but think you're following me. Uh <laughs> <laughs> Um, so, so if you wouldn't mind, can we kind of walk through each one of those that you're talking about the, 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 the nutrition and some of the things that, uh, people may be doing wrong all the way to the sleep. Cause I, that's important. I know 20 years ago, if you would have told me, well, you just need to sleep, I would have been all in. Right. But it, so, <laughs> for some reason it gets more difficult, you know, as you get older. So would you mind kind of walking through each one of those, uh, right. in that, uh, need right. acronym? So with with your nutrition, of course, nutrition is is paramount because if you don't have the nutrients in your body for your brain to have anything to work with, you know, you're dead in the water kind of thing because your your brain functions off the glucose, you know, and so it needs the nutrition. It also needs the other minerals, the trace minerals and those enzymes and things that are in there, our um, electrolytes that are in there to do the job that needs to do. And so, unfortunately, you all know about the SAD diet. Unfortunately, the uh, typical American diet is not, you know, best situated for brain health. So with most people, you are going to have to maybe tweak your diet to have a majority of fruits and vegetables, you know, in your diet. And your omegas, you know, that's a buzzword. Vitamin D, that's a buzzword. But those are important buzzwords when it comes to your brain because your brain functions well off of fatty acids and so you're going to have to have those in there those omegas and things in there as well so your nutrition has and also i know people don't want to hear this but calorie restriction i know we are we have all those mega super size me whatever's running around you get buy one get one free get buy one eat all get all you can eat for free or whatever that's not really the route you want to go your brain um, makes 
more brain cells when you don't overindulge, when you don't with all the calories. When you back off of that, it actually produces more brain cells. So you don't want to become a glutton, you know, with your nutrition, even if it is a healthy glutton, you don't want to become a glutton with your nutrition. And some people deal with that easily or simply with um, intermittent, intermittent fasting, you know, stopping that, locking that kitchen up, you know, for a certain minute power, number of hours at the end of the day. I guess, so. is that why as I've gotten older that uh, meals punish me so much more severely after I eat? I mm -hmm. eat them mm -hmm. as far as uh, there's sometimes where, you know, uh, I eat a meal that I know is not that great for me. My, my, my brain just shuts down. I'm done uh, mm -hmm. uh, for the mm -hmm. day. Can it have that, that much of an immediate effect? Yeah. It's on overload. Well, everyone's different. I have to preface it all with everyone is different. There's no one size fit all. There's no one way to do something that was going to be the remedy for everyone. So what you need to do as well, you need to learn your body. There may be some things that you do with your body that ha has, does not have a detrimental effect. And if I did the same thing, for example, I'm very salt sensitive. So you might be able to salt it up, salt up all this stuff on your food. And I eat the same thing and, you know, my blood pressure goes up the roof where yours didn't even change, you know? So you have to, and that's one thing about the program too, we tweak things and we discover and find what works best for you. So you have to really come to the pack where you, place where you know your body. That's why I don't um, prefer the programs that all just have one way for someone to do everything. And then someone just tries to, you know, push that down your throat in terms of this is how you have to do it because that may not be the best thing for you. Well, there again, okay. this is why I find what you're talking about so refreshing because uh, if you haven't noticed, just about every one of these people's way is the way, right? The only way. <laughs> um, and, uh, you know, just to hear that you say there that does, you know, require different things for different people depending on on your body i mean that, that completely makes sense so so obviously so nutrition can play a big part of, of it and it also it sounds like that can almost have an immediate effect so just like a you know eating poorly can have an immediate effect on on my uh mental state from brain fog uh mm -hmm. how quickly can that be reversed or, or, or avoided by uh, changing what I'm eating or when, I, when I'm eating? Mm -hmm. Once again, it depends on the person. I remember my son, when he decided to change his habits, and he was like a sugarholic type of person, and he immediately saw differences, you know? He immediately saw there, And now it's to the point where if he eats one thing, his, he can feel the reaction in his body, something he's not supposed to eat. He can feel the reaction in his body, that kind of thing. And so with me, which I never really um, went too far to the left on any type of food kind of thing, when I decided to get more food conscious, I didn't really notice a difference for quite some time, you know, because my body wasn't that far off kilter. So it's Yes, it can have. I had other people that have done things and they called me the next day and said, oh, my gosh, you know, I woke up so alert this morning and all this kind of stuff versus other people may not. So once again, it depends on the person, but th those possibilities are certainly out there where you may notice a difference right away. Usually they say give like eight weeks. Don't give up on anything until you've done it for like eight weeks, you know, to give your body time to really adjust and to benefit from it. But well, even, you know, in, in the grand scope of things, eight weeks is relatively uh, uh, you know, a short, <laughs> yeah. short period of time, you know, to, to be able to turn that around. Um, all right, so that's nutrition. So next is the first E, right, uh, which is? The next is the exercise. exercise. Oh, man. Exercise, exercise, yeah. <laughs> but, the, but the good news is? I mean, cardio is, 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 is the best, but there's all kinds of different cardio exercises as well. But even, even apart from cardio, you all need to other the other exercises as well, the balance exercises, because as you get in age, you, your response time for balance slows down. And um, that's why you get all these falls. That's why, why, why older people are so um, subject to falling. It, it's, part of it is because... In, in our youth, more youthful life, 
we can adjust faster to imbalance. As we age, our adjustment time is slower, so you can't catch yourself and you end up falling, you know. And so um, with exercise, balance exercises are extremely important. Also, strengthening exercises also because with the same thing with age, and there's a difference between age and damage, but there is age. We, ha- we will age, you know. With age, you know, comes a, 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 a loss of strength. Our growth hormone slows down as well. And so we have to do more things to keep it uh, manufacturing, to keep it pumping kind of thing. So you need different kind of exercises. But the, the good news is there's a, a, a type of exercise that's called NEAT. That's the acronym, N-E-A-T. It's an acronym for non-exercise active whatever, training or something. But anyway, that bottom line is it's just common chores. Things you do commonly don't stop doing. Unfortunately, with all of our conveniences, we don't we no longer mow the lawn or you're paying somebody to mow the lawn. You know, we no longer do any gardening because we're going to the store and buying our own food kind of thing. You know, we're paying someone to, to clean our house. So we're not cleaning the house. We're not, you know, polishing the furniture. We're not washing the dishes because we have a dishwasher. All of those things <laughs> have negatively affected, you know, exercise if you're if you're not doing you know any routine exercise and I noticed that myself with my husband when he retired how his um tone of his body really um decreased because he wasn't doing the hard labor anymore but he was sitting around home doing you know little to nothing and versus I was still doing the housework chores and stuff and so my agility and my tonality and everything stayed up and I watched his decline you know so just purposely doing things like folding your own clothes, you know, mopping the floor, you know, washing the dishes. If you're not going to do any other kind of exercise, there is a kind of exercise you can do. Well, you know, and um, I think that's uh, important that that you bring that up because just like meditation, people have preconceived notions of what meditation is. When you say exercise, you're not, you don't mean training for the NFL combines, right? You're, you're, you're talking about just move, right. right? Right. And that goes back to when you're doing your, and you're, when you're at work, you know, stand up after within the hour, stand up and walk around for five minutes. If you're home, go empty the trash, you know, get up away from the computer, you know, go straighten up the kitchen or go clean the refrigerator, whatever, get up and do something before you go back and sit at that computer or get the standing desk so you can stand up and move around while you're standing in front of the computer, but some type of movement regularly exercise (laughs) intentional. I did try the stand up desk, but it rusted in place. So, (laughs) (laughs) Well, you need to get up and move out of that room. Go do something. And it didn't rust in place in the standing position either. So, Um, (laughs) I got you. <laughs> uh, so, okay. Yeah. So exercise and then, then the next E is uh, enhancement. enhancement. Yeah. Enhancement. And some people know about that in terms of you hear people say, oh, I do crossword puzzles. Great. Wonderful. But crossword puzzles only, only work, you know, focus on one part of your brain. So yes, continue your crossword puzzles, but let, let, let's not, let that not be the only enhancement you give to your brain. Learning, any, learning a new skill of any type or teaching someone something ah. of any type, even, even if it's tutoring your kids or your grandkids or something, if it's teaching someone a new language, if it's teaching someone how to garden, teaching a new skill enhances driving a different way, not, not going the same route everywhere you go, challenging your brain do something driving without the GPS. Remember we had to get out the maps, you know, go mm. finding, finding how to get there without hitting that GPS button, you know, it's challenging your brain. Eating with chopsticks is challenging your brain. Which also helps your nutrition too, right? Yes. Yeah. The you know, last time I tried to eat with chopsticks, I only got a rice. That's all I got to eat. Was- <laughs> Yeah, it'll it'll get you that get you through that those thirty chews and everything too. Yeah. <laughs> you can't pick up the next, you know, you know, doing things like that to challenge 
your brain, volunteering somewhere where you have new experiences, you know, with, that's called enhancement. Your brain needs, you know, traveling. Your brain needs different exposures and different ways of, you know, figuring out what's going on in the world. Not just the same, plop yourself in front of the TV and watch three hours of, you know, the news or whatever. You know, it needs, it needs to be stimulated. But also socially in terms of conversations with people, you know, calling up people you don't know, calling up old friends, those kind of things. That also any type of stimulation, you know, puzzles, art, arts and crafts, anything instead of just the same old, same old. So m- mental exercise is really just like physical right. exercise. It, it, mm-hmm. it, it does that. And I guess you can mix the two. Cause when you were saying that, I thought about, you know, when I walk my dog, I, I do notice that if I say, you know what, let's try a different path today. Well, right. time goes by at a different mm-hmm. pace. You know, and then, mm-hmm. and all of a sudden I look at my steps, you know, on my little step counter and I think, oh, I went further than I normally do, mainly because right. I don't know where I'm going. So, um, <laughs> but that's good. So, so really enhancement, I guess we can think about that as, as a, just mental exercise, exercising, uh, your, right. your, your brain. Right. Um, yeah. and then, uh, What's the next step we, we have de-stress. there? De-stress. That's de-stress. It, yes. De-stress. And I do de-stress and detox about it. And that has to do with when we were talking before about meditation, you know, things that you do to bring yourself down, things that you do to um, make sure that your body's not in that overexcitable, anxious, anxiety type of mode, you know, workaholic type of mode. Do, do intentional things to keep yourself calm, the deep, the deep breathing exercises, it gets your circulation, gets more oxygen to your brain. It helps all, it helps your body. It calms you down. You know, we talk, there's dry, um, dry massages where you rub, you know, or, or massages in general, you know, where you rub yourself, um, infrared saunas, anything that's going to, you know, calm you, you know, and get you back into a relaxed uh, phase of mind is what, what you want, like the meditation, the prayer, what the things that you do that, and, and, and that can be different also for, for different, for different people, you know, what works for me may not work for me. What music is calming and relaxing silence. (laughs) Some people just need to get in a quiet space for a while. You know, you need to find that's one, things that we do, we tweak it for you need to find what works for you. You know, what is it that gets you there, that puts you there in that state where your mind is just calming down, you know? And I guess, you know, for some people, again, you know, so it's different for different people. Um, you know, I know some mm-hmm. people that, that you, uh, can you combine these? Because I know for some people, there's some kinds of exercises yes. that, that re- relax yes. them. But also on yes. the inverse of that, um, I know the people that are workaholics that say, um, you know, relaxation stresses me out. <laughs> it, 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 the, 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 thought, <laughs> the thought of doing nothing. Because uh, uh, well, their mind is so used to being, you know, they can't get their mind off of their job or what they need to be doing or whatever, which is a mindset that they have, but that doesn't mean that it's correct. And that while you're doing that, you're not your brain. I mean, it's not immediately damaging to you, but in the long run, it's damaging you, you know? Yeah. You may not see immediate effects of anything, but down the road, you're going to, that's why you see a lot of workaholics and stuff that end up, you know, with Alzheimer's or dementia or something like, boy, he was such a, you know, such a gift to the world, you know, his brain was just whatever, but yeah, he never let his brain rest. <laughs> well, you know, never. that is amazing. And, and, and so if we could, so talk about those, those combinations of that, because the, uh, you know, like, like I uh, mentioned that, that sometimes, you know, exercise is how some people yeah. re- 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 relax. And, and so, right. um, is that, um, and, something that, that can be considered? Exercise can be relaxed, but exercise is also breaking down things too. So you don't want to over exercise, you know, you don't want to overdo anything. So yes, exercise can be relaxing or whatever, but you should have some other alternative things. You should never have just one thing that you do, you know? Yeah. 
one thing that you do all the time. You should you should bury that. And uh, some of it is be- is experiential as well. You may not know that you like what I call there's a, uh, something that's called grounding, where you go out barefoot, you know, um, on a regular basis and just mesh with the with nature, you know, and just observe and let your. And there's something with the electromagnet stuff in the ground that goes through your your body or whatever and balances out whatever. But um, it's it's a calming. It helps you sleep better helps you function better and it's calm, you know, and it's different for different people. So you have to experience and find the things that ben- that that benefit you. But also with that is is the detox as well. Detox, de stressing. Detoxing is de stressing. <laughs> yeah. You know, in terms of, you know, not eating certain things that are going to, you know, be detrimental or gonna be have a toxic effect on you or whatever. Soothing teas or whatever you need, you know, that's going to help. And so you just kinda Get out there and and figure out what works for you, knowing that you need that in your life. <laughs> you know, you need something that's going to distress you in your life. Yeah, and then and then uh, sleep. You know, which used to be my favorite oh. activity, but it's just uh, it comes less and yeah. less. And you talked a little bit about that importance of sleep, but I think it's something that oh. a lot of people underestimate. Oh, a lot of us underestimate this because we see that as extra hours to get things done or extra hours to entertain ourselves, you know, extra recreational hours or whatever. However we phrase that, we sacrifice, you know, our sleep hours in order to do something else. And that is to our detriment as well. It may work for a while, but in the long run, it's it's not doing you any good. And a lot of people are experiencing things, and, and especially with the technology that we have now and all the conveniences that we have now, it's so easy to throw off our circadian rhythm, and it's, you know, so easily done, you know. And especially with COVID out there and people not going out so far, so so much, they're not getting their vitamin D, they're not getting the sunshine, they're not getting the little signals, you know, from nature that's going to help them with their sleep as well. Therefore, we have to be really proactive and really intentional, you know, purposeful to make sure we get our sleep. Because like I said, it is your maid service. And you can just, just, if you can just visualize what your room looks like, what your hotel would look like if you went for a week with no maid service, you know, <laughs> you, would, yeah. it would, you would have a mess in your room and that's what you have in your brain. If you don't let it have a chance to wash clean all of those, act, all that trash and waste from the day's activities, you know, and it needs the deep sleep time. You know, you have to let it go into all the, the stages of sleep so that it can get everything done. It has a time that is, you know, maximal time to do certain things and you need to make sure it gets everything done. It organizes what it's supposed to organize. It, you know, it solidifies the memories and things that you need to remember. You know, it cleans up the waste that you need to, that needs to be cleaned. It takes care of everything that needs to be taken care of. And so for that, a lot of us need a, a, a sleep hygiene, a sleep routine, you know, that we need to be um, intentional on cutting off certain things to allow our melatonin to kick in because with all the lights and screens that we, that we keep on until 10, 11, 12 o'clock at night, you know, then we jump in the bed and we want to go to sleep and our brain is like sleep. It's still, you know, still daytime. It's still, you know, I'm still up. I'm, I'm still awake. The melatonin hasn't kicked in yet because you haven't decreased the, the light, you know? And, and so we need to cut those things off. And give, you don't have to go directly to sleep, but for the hour or two before you go to sleep, do things that don't require your cell phone or your computer or your TV or whatever, you know, which is another lifestyle change for a lot of people. They don't know how to function (laughs) if they're not on their cell phone or their computer, (laughs) you know, (laughs) but, you know, go back, you know, go back to the oldie times, you know. And do some and have some quality time with your with your loved ones or your friends or whatever, you know, or just do some self um, me time, you know, do some painting or do some reading or something and get yourself in the mood, get in the mood, get your body in the mood, you know, to sleep. Well, I think, you know, this is just so remarkable because I think a lot of people probably right now listening to this realize that they may have a problem that they may not have realized they had before. 
in, in, in recognizing uh, some of these symptoms. And I want to bring up that uh, one of the things that I've read uh, recently on about like Alzheimer's and dementia is I, I see it being mentioned more and more being referred to as a type three diabetes, right? That, 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 Correct. that, that um, uh, to me, really puts a spotlight on the fact that that it is lifestyle related you know similar right. to, to types right. too and and that seems to be what you um are talking about that that these are mm-hmm. lifestyle changes that can help mm-hmm. avoid this type of, of thing would that be accurate right they say if you have if you have type 2 diabetes you are you double your chance of getting alzheimer's or some form of dementia you double your chance so that's that's pretty scary. <laughs> yeah, um, there are a lot of people that are diabetic or pre-diabetic. You know. So so what we've talked about is, you know, these lifestyle changes and and how they can delay or prevent um, some of this uh, cognitive decline. And what I'd like to do now is kind of take a a turn for people that maybe it's not a cognitive decline people have, that have maybe suffered a, a brain injury or some type of, of brain trauma can this stuff apply or or help or or aid in recovery of that type of thing right they say it's never too late to start the beauty of it is that your brain is remains capable of producing new brain cells and pathways and if it's capable of doing it, you need to give it an opportunity to do it. Now, the extent of the damage of the, of the deadness is already there. You're not going to be able to bring that back. But what you can do is you can stimulate your brain through lifestyle you know, keys for brain health. You can stimulate your brain to start producing new ones. And when they produce new ones, instead of having those die off, you can nur- nurture them and nourish them. So yes, it's ne- they say it's never too late to start and it's never too soon to begin. Yeah, I think, what is the term? I see that um, neuroplasticity or something like that. Yeah, that, that I guess exactly. that, that, that even though maybe some pathways were damaged, that, that your brain is capable mm-hmm. of, of creating new pathways mm-hmm. for, for yeah. that type of thing. But, uh, but you're saying that, yeah. that that's entirely possible with... Um, with some effort, it takes some. You have to do something right. to to make that and, happen. And the result is, is di- the result is different for each. Like you said, you can't predict. You know, it's going to be different for everyone. You don't know because you don't know what's all been done in there. You know, <laughs> you don't know what they're doing. But but you can expect. You know, you can expect good things to come of it. There's a book that's called The Boy with Half a Brain, and the boy was he was like three years old, and they they took out half of his brain. And he was, he is still able, he was still able to, you know, walk and talk and go to school and learn. He only has half a brain. They're astonished at what he can do because his brain took what it had. They stimulated him. They gave him all the enrichment and, you know, the nurturing, the the, the nutrients and everything that his brain could possibly use. And this, and this, his brain took it and ran with it. Wow, that's amazing. And they said, said it was. They said he has a slight limp. They said he had a he has a slight limp, and he can't lift his left arm. Um, volunteer, you know, he has to put a lot of he has to purposely, purposefully lift his arm. But I'm like, dang, <laughs> have a brain. What do you want? But his IQ test tested high in the 90s and hundreds or whatever the high 90s or hundreds or whatever. Can you imagine half a brain? Yeah, that's uh, it. Probably uses more of that than most people do with food. Brains, do. Right? <laughs> that's, uh, yeah. I know. Well, um, you know, I, I have to say, Bernice, this is just really r- r- remarkable stuff, and I and I definitely hear your, your passion um, uh, behind this. I have to ask, you know, what what led you to to do this? Mm. What 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 led you to do what you do and help the the people that you're helping? Well, it started with my mom started years ago with my mom. My mom had a um, chronic illness and it um, put her on dialysis. And that was hard for everyone. And, and I, I probably will never forget her telling me one day, she said, Nisi, I, I brought this on myself because years ago, I mean, she was 
to start taking medication for her problems and things. But years ago, the doctor told her he would suggest and recommend, you know, that he would, she'd exercise. She needs to lose some weight. She needs to get a handle of her salt intake and all this kind of stuff. And she's like, Mm-mm, you know, I'm going to live my life. And so she, she chose not to. And she just relied totally on the medications that she was given. And of course, those medications increased in number. You know, how she had a whole bag of, medic, of, of pills and stuff by the time she died. And she was put on dialysis. And um, she said, I, I brought that there was a lot that I could have done. Not to say that I would never have been in dialysis, but her last seven years of life were, were not, you know, were not quality in any sense of the term. And it got me thinking, you know, my mom, and she died. It got me thinking of, you know, preventive health, you know. And so in all of that, I started looking at at, at, at changing what I was doing. And then my husband, he um, got diagnosed with diabetes. And I just went crazy because they were saying, you know, in the next five years he could be on dialysis. And I was just, oh, no, no, no. And so that just took me, you know, into this whole world. And I became, that's when I became a certified wellness coach and started working with that. And we got his diabetes under control and all of that, which was great. But then when he retired, a like, year or two after he retired, he contracted sepsis and he was hospitalized and put in ITU for like two weeks. And that was a whole thing in itself as well. And through that, it made me tweak what I was doing because I got just a glimpse of what it could be like to be with someone who had a broken brain. I mean, he was delirious. He was, he was hallucinating, you know, he was angry, you know, he was, you know, you had to hold him down sometimes. I mean, it wasn't a happy time <laughs> and it was a frustrating time and it was a tearful time. And I was so grateful. I was so thankful to God that, that took him out of that. His, his, his kidneys, you know, collapsed and all of that. And, it, and God brought us through all of that. And I was internally grateful. But, and through all of that, I said, if there's anything I can do to help people not go through this, because I just went through it for her a couple of weeks. I mean, he had, you know, recovery things to go through, but just think of the people that deal with that ongoing for the rest of their lives, you know, both the victim and the caregiver. Yeah. That's... And so I, I, and so I started researching that and doing that. And I found out they predicted by 2050, one out of every two people that are over the age of 65 will have either Alzheimer's or some form of dementia. If we don't change things, one out of two, mm. that means either you or your spouse. So if you or your spouse have it, guess what? You're both impacted. <laughs> you know, no I'm like, kidding. dang, that's crazy. And so that really, you know, thrusts me into this. And I'm just, I've learned so, so much the last few years. And that was, be- I learned all, this was all before COVID hit, you know, and then COVID hit <laughs> and all yeah. of the things that are associated with that, you know, and I'm just, Really, really, I want to do what I can, you know, for people that want, you know, to know, you know, to want to make a change. Everyone doesn't, you know, but for those that do, I want to be there, you know, to serve them. Well, for those that do, they're very lucky and fortunate that that there is someone like you that um, has created this map and can can help them navigate through that. So, so for those that uh, do want to make a difference, what, what what are some of the ways that uh, they can work with you? What what are you know, especially in this time, is, is it something that's virtual? Is it something that they do? Uh, is it one on one or in groups or, or something like that? To kind of describe how the different ways that people can work with you. Yeah, this 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 time in this season had kind of moved me toward the online thing. So yes, I have developed a program that is online and there's there's two ways you can go about it. One is a free five day master class. It's called Better Brain. And that's an online course where I work with you through those needs that the brain have and we touch on each one of them and we give you an overview of them and I kinda help you, you know, get started with that. And that's a free course that anyone can sign up for and, and go through. I also have a 10 week online course called keep your brain sharp. And so this is a more intense course in that we take two weeks to go through each one of those needs and we address it 
and we also come up with different options for you because like I said, everyone, every one doesn't do everything the same way. There's no one fit for everyone. So we need to find out what's best for you, what you are doing, what you are not doing, what you need work on, your strengths, your weaknesses, your pain points. So we have take two weeks for each one of those areas and we work through that with you. So that you can have what you need put together to maintain a lifestyle that will support healthy brain for everyone. Uh, so, um, I guess, uh, you know, what's the best way if people want to find out more about, uh, Bernice Hunt and, and, you know, working through what, one of these, uh, programs, what's the best way for them to, uh, uh, to do that? Um, well, I have a website that's called keep your brain sharp.com. So you can find information, more information on that. And then I also have an email. You can email me at info at keep your brain sharp. Well, Bernice, I, I got to thank you for, for, for coming on uh, today and, and sharing this. It's just been a wealth of information. And um, again, you know, it's just refreshing that to, to have someone that can, can walk through this and explain this stuff that's, it's not about uh, there's a pill for that, right? That 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 um, it's, a, it's a realistic approach and an approach that is not one size fits all. That it does take some uh, adjusting uh, depending on each person, but uh, that's the reality of it. And I think um, you know that's why I consider you you an influencer because it's it's not about you know, the way or the only way, but, um, you know, you have a way that can be adjusted for, uh, different individuals. So, so once again, thank you so much for, for coming on and sharing this today. Thank you, Jack. I appreciate you having me on. All right, folks, there you have it. Definitely check out more of a uh, Bernice hunt. If you, uh, or a loved one and, and, you know, like she said, it's, it's becoming more and more prevalent, that uh, and more likely that uh, either you or someone you know will be uh, impacted by um, you know by, by, by these these terrible effects. So uh, again, check it out. Keep your brain sharp. Uh, we'll have links right there on the show post. And until next time on Influencers Radio, remember you are the only real game changer. You've been listening to Influencers Radio. To get all past shows and updates on future shows, visit InfluencersRadio.com today. 